Hi guys, a uh, couple of videos that I'm going to do today are looking at the start of the physical, um, UK's physical landscape and you've got a couple of lessons which you have in PowerPoint form which are about um, the geology and the physical process that act on the UK. So I'm going to go through some of those processes for you in case you find them a little bit difficult. So I'm following the PowerPoint and I've made some notes as well. So I'm going to explain some of the processes and some of the factors to you. So in this first PowerPoint, we're talking about um, landscapes in the past, what past processes have an impact on what we see um, today in the UK. And we're going to look at the role of geology and other processes in producing um, different landscapes in different parts of the UK. So first of all, I'd like to start with geology as the main thing that shaped what we find on the ground in different places. So overall, um, the UK geology is roughly split, and one of the PowerPoint slides talks about this. It's roughly split um, north, west to southeast. Now in the northwest, the north and the west, we have mostly igneous rocks, which are um, harder rocks. They are um, magma that's come to the surface, or it's where magma has actually um, transformed some of the sedimentary rock into metamorphic rock, and that's harder. So the west of the UK, the north and the west, we're looking at very hard rock, so basalts and granites and um, <clears throat> uh, marble and things like that. So these are very resistant. So overall, these end up becoming uh, high areas because they don't get eroded as quickly because the rock is very hard. In the south and the east, we've got mostly softer rock, so that would be sedimentary rock, and that is eroded much, much quicker, and uh, as a consequence, we end up with much flatter, overall much flatter um, relief. So in Kent, for example, is a really good example of this, we have um, very quite flat um, hills, um, a little bit hilly, not that not that mountainous really. And that's because the sediment's very, very soft and so it's eroded really, really easily. So that's the general issue with geology. Um, so the UK, um, like I said before, has got harder rock, igneous rock, etc. That's where the higher land is, that's in the north and the west. So you're talking about the Lake District, Scotland, um, Wales, and the southeast of England, uh, southwest of England, I should say, um, Dart, Dart, Dartmoor. And then you've got the east and the southeast, which is softer rock. So that's um, more more hilly, um, just hills rather than mountains. So that's the first um, uh, the first uh, factor. So um, some parts of the UK from a geological purpose were covered by sea at one point. So we have a lot of dead sea creatures which died in the sea and, and it kind of settles on the bottom. And over time, these sea creatures kind of built up and put pressure on each other and um, compressed essentially and over millions and millions of years these compressed into uh, limestone or chalk and then what happened because obviously the UK used to be a lot further south um, when te plate tectonics was kind of um, you know when we had one landmass kind of Pangaea and this landmass as it was pushed northwards kind of um, buckled and twisted and pushed the seabed upwards and that's where we get areas of kind of limestone um, in the UK etc and that's basically petrified fossils from um, sea creatures etc that's been overlain by more sediment which has compressed it further and um, so we um, those skeletons have crushed together and compacted to form what we know as limestone or chalk um, also, some parts of the UK had lava and magma coming out, especially Scotland and the Lake District. And again, that's um, harder rock and that um, shows itself now as mountains and stuff like that. So those past geological processes um, influence the type of rock that we've got in the UK and the type of rock influences the type of relief that we have. So relief, remember, means how high or low the land is. So the general rule of thumb is that where we've got harder rock, we have got... Um, higher land and when we've got softer rock we've got lower land and that's a kind of uh, a split um, I hope that's the no that's the right way around for you it's kind of a split to the north and the west and the south and the east so that's um, the first part that's geology so the second thing so it talks about that in the PowerPoint so I'm just going to go on a little bit it talks about different types of rocks there so if I can make the PowerPoint work um, yeah, so the next couple of slides, you've got slide three, which talks about the north-south divide. 
um, so that's fine. So the other things that we had um, affecting it was that we have tectonic processes. So as it says, I've just talked about that a little bit. So we've got, UK used to be near the equator and um, as the, um, the land, Pangaea, etc., got moved and twisted and, and separated, a lot of the land was twisted and turned and shifted and uplifted. And this caused a lot of um, snapping of the rocks, etc. And when rocks kind of buckle and snap, what you end up with is maybe like um, a hill forming or a mountain forming of that rock that's kind of kept up in the air. And it's quite resistant, remember, so it stays up quite high. Um, and so you've got some areas were snapped and tilted and some areas were actually pushed up because the lava kind of came underneath and pushed it up, some of the magma, I should say. So we've got lots of evidence in the UK that we've got um, tilted and twisted rocks and we've got quite high land because magma underneath the earth's crust kind of pushed up some of the land. So um, that uplift again caused some of the higher areas in the north and the west. So that is the tectonic processes. Um, so they've uplifted the land. And then uh, a lot more recently, kind of, you know, thousands of years rather than millions of years ago, we've got glaciation. So we used to have the top of the earth, the north, the northern section. Um, it used to have a massive glacier over it as recently as about 10,000 years ago. And so that glacier kind of sat over the North Pole and it came down a little bit as well. And it came down to the UK and it covered the UK and it covered a lot of the UK, but it kind of stopped kind of just north of London. So we weren't glaciated in the southeast, but I'll get to that a bit later. But the north of England was. And what happened was that big glacier, that big bit of ice kind of sat over the land. And as it moved southwards, it kind of eroded everything that it, it touched. So where we had this high land, um, with mountains, we had um, valleys maybe where the glacier would move down and erode those valleys. And um, the, what's the, the process, that process has caused U-shaped valleys, which is literally a valley that is very, very flat and wide and then goes up quite steeply either side. And that again can be found in the north or the northwest of England where you've got that high land. We weren't really touched by the glaciers at all and we had um, other things happening. So um, yeah, it changed V-shaped valleys to U-shaped valleys. Um, and then when the glaciers melted, and the last one was about 10,000 years ago, and that ice melted because the planet warmed up, etc. And all of that water basically flowed out of the glacier and all of that land that it eroded is all of the ground um, and it um, turned into small sediments, was essentially washed out uh, with the glacial water and was dumped on the south of England. And a lot of it was dumped on us in the southeast. That's my washing machine you can hear. Um, and it was, I should have stopped it really, and it was dumped all over um, the south of England and we, as a consequence, in the southeast, we've got very, very soft um, geology, very soft land, which is why it's eroded really, really easily and quickly. We don't really have any igneous uh, rocks here and so our land's quite flat and we've got the consequence of that glacier melting and throwing or, or bringing all of its rubbish as it were to us and um, that being all deposited um, over the top of the rock that was there anyway. So that is that one. So that is the first PowerPoint done. I hope I haven't gone through that too quickly, but that essentially, that is, they are the physical processes, really the main processes that have an impact, a big impact on where we've got the geology and where we've got the major relief. In the next video, I'm going to be looking at some of the weathering and erosional processes. So check that out if you want me to go through that. And hopefully by then, the washing machine may have stopped. Okay, see you later.